you were looking at these things called quadratic equations. And I was just saying, when you're thinking about what a quadratic equation is, you're just trying to find what is x equal to to make this statement true. And I left this one at the end of um, that do now. If you tried to do it by the normal method of factorizing, you worked out that it didn't actually work. We, it, we couldn't find something that multiplies to 2 and adds 6. It's impossible. Does that mean that there's no solution to this equation? You should have equals 0 there. Does that mean that this is like impossible to solve, right? Well, no, because pretty much every equation really has a solution like this, okay, that it equals to zero. There are some exceptions, but for the ones that we're dealing with, they will pretty much always have a solution, okay? How can we go about that? Well, that's what I want to tell you about today. It's called the quadratic formula. And it's in this box here, now it looks all big and scary, but hang on, let me just break down what this actually is. First of all, this is just a formula. So we can just substitute values in there, and that's going to give me what x is equal to to make this true. Where do these a, b, and c values come from? Well, if you think back to what exercise you were just doing, you're matching the letters for a, b, and c for your quadratic equations, and that's all you're doing. So the two steps to use, or well, sorry, three steps to, do, to apply this quadratic formula. Here's the first step. Just write down a, b, and c. And the second step, you substitute the values into this equation, and the third step is we're going to write both solutions. And we can write them in two ways, either decimal or exact. I'll explain that in a moment. But let's just look at um, this third step. When I say write both solutions, right? remember, the first example I gave you was that n squared equals to 25. Well, then I've got two solutions here. n can equal to plus or minus 5. So when you go to your quadratic equation, that's already kind of inbuilt into it. Can you see that? We've got this like plus or minus guy there, wow. right? So that's going to be the two solutions that I get. Let me show you how this works. Let's look at this first one here, right? All I'm going to be doing is step one. I'm going to write down a, b, and c. And I always do this, right? And even I always tell my year 12s as well, always write down the a, b, and c values because sometimes you, you see negatives in there and maybe you get mixed up. So here, my a value, that's the coefficient of x squared. That's just one. My b value, that's just going to be a number in front of x. That's just six, easy. And my number by itself, that's easy, that's just 2. That's step 1. Step 2 is I'm going to substitute those values into my quadratic formula here. So how that's going to work is I'm just going to write x equals. And this is a really important step. You want to write what you're actually doing here. You want to write what you're actually doing here. What you're doing with this quadratic formula is you're solving this equation. You're saying, OK, what values of x do I need so that this will equal to 0? That's all I'm doing. And then I'm just going to put in my values. So minus b, so that's minus 6, plus or minus root b squared. So I'm, I'm just going to write out those values squared. I'm not going to actually simplify anything out first. Minus 4ac. So when I see something like this, 4ac, that's just all of them multiplied together. So I've got 4 times 1 times 6, all divided by 2 times j. Yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, 4ac. Yeah, sorry, you're right. Minus 2. There you go. <laughs> Thanks for pointing that out. So 4ac, 4 times a times 2. So that's why it's 4 times 2. That's why I always write the table out so I can really identify when mistakes come up. We're always going to make mistakes, but this helps me really identify, oh, where do the mistakes come up? What I'm going to do here now is... For this question, you can see they said solve using the formula, but they say leave as exact. What that means is you could put all this into a calculator. It could probably be very messy, but they just want you to leave it as it is like that. Okay? They want you to leave it as like that. But what I would do is I would just simplify this. Remember, this is all under a square root here. So I would just simplify that out a bit more. I would say this is equal to minus 6 plus or minus root. Well, 6 squared is just 36. 4 times 1 times 2, that's just 8, all over 2. And then I can still keep going. Well, 36 minus 8, what's that going to be? That's just 28. Yep. Yep. 28 over 2. OK, so my final answer is actually this line here. The plus or minus, we can just leave it. Okay? In the same way, look, remember this one here, right? 
I said my answer is plus or minus 5. In here, my answer is minus 6 plus or minus root 28 over 2. I actually already have two answers there. I already have two answers there, right? Because remember I said that the plus or minus is kind of inbuilt into this equation. That already gives me two solutions. That already gives me two solutions. So the final answer, minus 6 plus or minus root 28 over 2 there. And to avoid any mistakes, or at least to identify any mistakes in the future that I might make, I'm always going to write down what my a, b, and c values are, right? My a is obviously the number in front of the x squared. That's just 3. Um, Abby, what was the number in front of the x? What's my b value going to be? Oh, be careful. Yeah, so be careful. Anytime there's a negative there, you also have to consider that. That's also going to be negative 5. My c, though, that's fine. That's just a positive number. Be careful. When you write down those a, b, and c values, when you write down those a, b, and c values, when you're substituting it into your quadratic formula, this guy here, be very careful because sometimes it can, be, it can uh, affect it. Right? So I'm still going to write out step two. I'm going to substitute my values in now. When I'm going to write minus b, I'm going to first write negative, and then I'm going to put in what my b value is. That's negative 5. You can see it's already going to change that. So that's why I'm going to write it step by step very carefully. Then I've got plus or minus. Now with the b squared, I saw a lot of people writing it like this. I'm going to advise against doing that because if you put that in your calculator, just try it now. If you put in, yeah, if you write in minus 5 just squared, they actually give you minus 25, okay? Why isn't that right? Well, because what you want is, look back at your formula, you want the whole of b squared, right? You want minus 5 squared. You already know that that should be a positive number because minus 5 times minus 5, that's, that's a positive. Because if you put minus 5 squared, if you just put it like this into your calculator, your calculator will give you negative 25. So at the outside and the start, I'm, yeah, I'm just going to leave it like that. Just leave it like that. Uh, because look at your formula. Your formula says minus b. Yep. So you want the negative of that. Let's keep going. So minus 4 times... I'm running out of room here. 3 times 1, all over 2a. Now, in this case, my a is just 3, so that's 2 times 3. OK, I've got like a lot of messy stuff here. Let's, let's try and simplify this a bit more. Well, minus, minus 5, that's just a positive 5. Negative 5, all squared. That's why I say all squared all the time, because I, I don't want you to just put that in your calculator. I know that's just going to be 25. 4 times 3. That's just 12. All over 2 times 3, that's just 6. Anything else I can do here? Yes. What else? Sam? Yeah, 25 minus 12. Nice. Now, some people were asking, I'm going I'm to touch on this next lesson. That's how you do it, by the way. I want to touch on this next lesson. Some people were asking, how do you actually put this in your calculator? How do I actually know this is right? So I'm going to still mail in this calculator again. What I want you to do is, what's actually happening here? Yeah, Matt, you got an idea? Yeah, right. Okay, so go back to, always go back to easy examples if you're confused, right? Here, when you write plus or minus 5, your two solutions are either 5 or negative 5. Over here, what are your two solutions? Well, your two solutions are either 5 plus root 13 over 6 or... 5 minus root 13 over 6. It's just easier to write it like that, so you don't have to write it twice, right? How can you check if this is correct? Or how can you check if this is correct? Go back into your equation now and actually put back in, put back in for me, into this equation here, and see if you get 0. 